third case study um, intend to take you through is called the Prana, which was a residential tower designed in Kolkata. When we went to the site, we got the USP of the site. You know, we saw that it was filled with the best thing that Calcutta needs: trees. And it was quite criminal for us to think, why you want to do what the developer does? Can we leave it the way it is? But having said this one, we were inspired that can we, let's see and if we can really do something, keeping the trees together. And that's what the name, naming had originated, prana. It's about life. The life for us is the world around us, essentially the flora. So this was a site which has wonderful um, tree cover, as you can see. And when we went below the tree, we could see there's a temperature fall difference. It's almost like four per four degrees. So from the outside to the to the shaded areas, a very visible, very perceptible difference of fall in temperature. So it was a microclimate which was quite inspiring. We understood what was the another problem there at the site was. It was the USP was a tree, well, the problem which the person, developer, pointed out eventually was the railways next to that. We had the railway line and next adjacent to the site and the snarl of the engine and the thud of the locomotive was a big issue in terms of its sound and noise. This was a challenge because the development was focused essentially for the HIG class. And we were looking for a solution all around. How can that be? What to do around? So this very simple thing, you know, DGU would take care, which we're okay, that takes care of sound not coming inside. But what about the life that comes in the terraces? We want terraces to be seen, uh, people to enjoy the terraces. So when we went to a height, to the neighboring height, uh, to see what's around, the third issue came, which is actually an urban issue was it was overlooking a lot of slum development and uh, good or bad this was it of course it is not a great thing to see but that's an important thing to understand and be sensitive about in urban design so we didn't want to make very stoic building which was telling itself that i am uh, i don't want to look at you but i am like completely opaque i have no connection with you guys so what what kind of a Language, if I just wrap the building around with an opaque facade, DGUs, no balconies, nothing, how does it work? Because just for the sound? So you'd rather try to work around for both the views. The client said he would not like the HIG uh, segment to look over down into the uh, slums, neither would he actually appreciate uh, the privacy being breached and all these factors which are there. Uh, for the HIG class. The other important point was how do we handle the sound in terms of, so can we make a facade which would actually attenuate sound, which would deflect, can it be baffled design? And can the design be done in such a manner that becomes a object of appreciation for the community all around? And this became a very important point. If it was green, can the HIG people, can we give them terrace greens to the, to the extent that they can also do their vegetable farming? So when we laid down all these things and we were looking around for a solution, we kind of got inspired, the footprints and etc. how limited footprint can it come? But we got inspired by the biomimicry around. Uh, we could see the molds and the mushrooms, the kind of umbrellas, the molds, and you know, they were, they were like kind of having cantilevers from the timber, which was from the bark, from the main trunk, which was existing. So they would cantilever and become like a planer, uh, like a planes, and they would take sunlight, giving us the, ex uh, the answer that can the terraces, can we carve out something which can go as extended terraces in symphony with uh, the, form or the verticality and that would take care of the deflection of the railway, the sound from noise from the railways 
and can also give platforms for green volumes. They will also cut off the angle which was needed for the privacy, the, the breaching angle. This is interesting and uh, it started all when we visited the site. When we went to the site, the client wanted a HIG housing. Uh, when we went to the site, the site was an HIG, it was, was the earth, it was full with uh, big trees. And uh, in my heart, it was tricking that to tell the client, let's not build anything here. But that man has paid a huge amount of money. So uh, we thought, let's, let's keep these trees and think something beyond. There were issues at site. One of the important issues at site was the railway line next to the site, uh, which actually was a source of a major uh, uh, problem about the noise from both the thud and the snarling of engines. Along the site, there was a lot of slum development, which was visually not an interesting site though, but that's an urban design issue, so which had to be catered at a different level. At our level, we wanted to make a design which would keep the trees intact, which would take care of the locomotive noise around, and would also become a very interesting site for the slum dwellers to look up to and also for my HIG dwellers not look into because they would not like to see a slum all around. With all this, we wanted to have, can we give, give each apartment a terrace green to grow their own vegetables? So we just calculated a nuclear family would need about on a, on a, on a vertical farm, intensive cultivation, drip course, etc. Uh, we thought about 800 square feet of area would be needed for an apartment to grow. It's not full, but it's interesting vegetable garden for each one and what, what would become interesting uh, addition to the urban living. While we were looking around, uh, we got inspired by the mushroom and the mold on the walls, on the bark of the trees. They were giving us a solution, giving a solution to have cantilever, can, cantilever, uh, juxtaposing each other into some kind of an organic form. And that was a visual nice sight which we noticed on the bark. The trees were doing a lot of drama. The trees were actually controlling a lot of uh, heat from outside. They were giving birth to their own microclimate. And we, when we measured it, it was almost four and a half to five degree difference from the outside and below the sh under the shade. A nice transpiration gain was helping us to m give an environment of kind of a forest living. Taking up forest vertically was something exciting that we wanted to do and make it sensible and sensitive to the HIG dwellers above. Uh, can we have a facade, we were also actually contemplating, can we have a facade which would actually add us like baffle to the noise, can we deflect the noise, partly absorb it, partly deflect it. So can we have this overlapping organic balconies uh, made up of some kind of acoustical mix, which is now actually basically it's an acoustical mix with GRC as a cladding device. Essentially, it's a steel cantilever. On the cladding, we added these uh, these panels, which would actually deflect the noise and act like a vertical acoustic baffling unit and reduce the intensity, both in terms of absorption as a reflection. So when we took over to this uh, to design, it was it was two apartments per core. And they were designed with full flexibility so that the HIG dweller can have the, the apartment or the the owner could be flexible in shaping his indoor spaces with a lot of light and ventilation. And each one had this play of balconies staggering at three different uh, levels um, uh, in three different forms that each one is actually a terrace. A part of it can be a balcony, but all around wrapping it, acting as like the mushroom which has grown vertically and the mold and each loaded with full green scapes. So, well, the program was on the lower level, we had this club which was having the green and the facade of which was having an exoskin was made up of GRC louvers, inside was glazing. And the louvers was again to cut the glare um, from the adjoining, the adjoining mass and not even because we didn't want the heat to be reflected straight um, onto the leaves 
and the neighboring trees. So we were sensitive and not to reflect a substantial heat to the joining plants and flora and fauna. It would disturb their uh, ecological uh, habitat. So we wanted to build around something with timber. So we added actually uh, GRC. Uh, had an option of WPC also. And not timber because uh, timber, uh, but looked like timber, but not timber. So all the design was done, keeping the solar shading factors, etc., cantilevers. But interestingly, when the design evolved, it evolved to give as a vertical 800,000 square feet terraces loaded with green, having enough, and the staggering allowed every green terrace to live by itself, to sustain by itself. Uh, that was interesting. And we, they actually act as, when we, ex we examined the model on the acoustical uh, design, so we actually thought that it was attenuating around 45 to 50 percent of the, of the locomotive noise. And we actually cut off all kind of in, impeaching uh, vision lines from the slum to the residences by having these cantilevers. So this design is a evolution of vertical living, uh, both sensitive to the nature, to the existing scenario, without challenging, uh, thwarting the existing situations, be it the locomotive sound or be it uh, the kind of dwelling around you, you can still give birth to uh, something pleasant, both for the environment and the people around you. The fourth case study is an interesting one, where we got inspired to make a design which would essentially target a restorative architecture. An architecture which would start giving back to the environment. So this project is called Biome Kolkata. And the project is a basically mixed use development. The client was a developer who wanted to make his corporate office. He also wanted to make some offices which he could actually sell and make the project more viable. He partnered with a landowner who wanted to make a convention. So it became a mixed use. A convention in the lower level, offices in the vertical level. How we interweaved and uh, the, the workspaces for future was essential thought which shaped the architecture. Co-working spaces, social spaces together become the energy in an office. This takes out the fatigue. Designs have to be more biophilic to lessen the stress. They have to include the nature around them. They have to enjoy the changing twilights. If I can engage with birds around me, butterflies, it will love me. And that takes off all the stress in the workspace. You become more creative, you reduce absenteeism, your health improves by more than 30%. So a design which would become the best in terms of well-being or can it be a well, sta well, well standards can be taken care in terms of its best specifications. Taking you to Biome, the site is in Salt Lake Sector 5. When all the buildings are straight glass facades or ACP cladded, we didn't want either of them. Glass is sensitive, but too much glass is no, no glass. So we wanted the building to actually say that today it is about making it more green, not just on rating and performance, but in terms of its active green. Can it hub more and more plants, trees along with it? So we had these trees in the design as tall as 12 meters and at height of more than 25 meters. So we had this convention center in a lower level with cafes and things like this. And then we had these offices which were actually vertically stacked. And in between them, we had a big space basically called the forest floor, which would have all the social spaces, the meeting spaces, um, the interesting food courts and F&B areas. It would also have a jogging track. 
It will have meditation spaces, swimming pools and clubs and all together around 50 full grown trees and that is something which was the USP of this design. A facade which would actually become more greener over the years. We know that Calcutta is least among the metros in terms of its green cover. We actively want to increase the green cover. And plots like, smaller plots like the one for Biome would not give much space to bigger trees. Of course, we have substantial about 20 trees being planted on the perimeter. But together, we have given birth to around 79 to 80 trees, full grown trees in the entire building mass, with a solar farm capped on the top. The plan was very simple, but it was engaging how we handled the urban forest. The facade was critical because not only it had to allow a lot of ventilation, views, and transparency, but it also had to change for future. Two important constraints were there. Can the facade accommodate air taxis in future? By 2026, 27, you'll have air taxis, maybe. A little later, maybe. But soon in the future, you'll have people try flying up. Can we have emergency taxis taking off from terraces? And can, in future, if I want to change this office into something else, can my facade adapt too? So we had got these panels, which were offset from the cantilever terrace. The cantilever portion was all green in the perimeter. And these panels were basically retractable and can change its geometry. They can be fixed or loosened up the way we want it. Even the flow plate was steel, modular steel, so they could actually increase or decrease the intermediate flow plates without changing the basic grid structure. And at every third level, we had this extended green terraces all around. The section makes you clear in terms of massing. We have got the conventional layers below, and then comes the three flow plates of the transplant offices with its green around it. Then we had above, and then we have got three levels of offices on the top. Between them, we've got this forest floor, which is the labyrinth of all facilities. It's a place which establishes the social balance and bring the work and play together. People are suffering in offices because of SBS, sick building syndrome or the synthetic environment that the facades bring, can the facades be more natural? So while we had this, this green in the facade to take care of the biodiversity inclusion, uh, the spillovers of outdoor, semi-outdoor spaces, the engaging spaces, we also wanted to see how the facade changed over the years can people tomorrow, if they want to alter something in between, my external doesn't actually get disturbed. Why, if I want to change the glass, intermediate glass panelings and massing, and want to change the position of intermediate terraces, might the bigger terraces which carry the trees become more of a containment, and they also hold the cables together on different levels. These cables would actually rear vertical green. And that's what the slide shows, how your facades, which are basically ahead in front of um, the, the office spaces, not the social forest floor, but the office spaces. That's the cables can then be added on the facade and you can actually rear active green on them. So in future, you can actually make them as more greener facades if you really want to do. And this was a kind of flexibility we wanted to bring in the facade, but not because, because uh, by, by putting into a lot of complicated uh, technology, but uh, by incorporating something more sensible and uh, more human friendly. So while the technology was simply adding a cable um, with a mesh around, which would bring the green vertical, what it increases was the hostile environment around in terms of its 
pollution and, and the industrial pollution on the above level while the, the particulate pollution in the lower levels, all come together to perform the, the facade, the green facade can take care of this kind of a situation. Restorative to architecture, because it is for us that we need to do such designs. It is nothing to do marketing or selling. It is sensitivity. The facades had to be more transparent, more engaging with nature. Hence, we thought of taking the entire flora vertically. In the entire mass, the massing, we got about 80 trees. When I say 80 trees, I mean full-grown trees, approximately about 12 meters in height. So one would, 12 to 15, one would need about three floors to engage a building. So the entire design became a cluster of vertical band bundle of three floors each. We wanted to actually build in a lot of sense in, for future. Reuse is one thing important that we should consider. Can we actually change facades, alter them, modify them without changing the structure? Can we have facades which will be green? And even if we change anything inside, it should not disturb the screen. This was about the design. The design also had to make a handshake for transportation system in future. We'll have air taxis by 2027, dropping you at transport or transfer levels. So this is going to be vertical transportation systems. So we had got terraces, which can actually take off for both emergency as well as for usual flying of air taxis on vertical levels. So facade, handling a mixed use development. We have convention center level below. And then we have offices in clusters of three, bundles of three. In between, we got the social hospitality floor, which was made as the forest floor. The forest floor had co-working spaces, f &B outlets, marketing spaces, therapy spaces, meditative spaces, gymnasium, health areas. It was, a, this was something, including a jogging track in that level. People can go around. How did the facade become important is in two parts. One, we wanted a facade which can actually change. So the panels which can be removed and plugged in, that's about the three levels. And in front of it, we wanted, after the trees have grown to their capacity over the next three, four years, we, the usual tree that we planted in the perimeter on a depth, on a terrace, which was extending more than four and a half to five meters cantilevers. We wanted cables to be tied vertically, engaging the three floors of four meters each, so about, almost about 16 meters in height and grow more green on the perimeter. So in case there's a change happening, construction thing is happening, change is happening in the internal levels of the three levels in terms of their uh, modular design, because each floor is made up of, of uh, steel panels which can be removed and you can actually modulate the floor plate of the three floors, except those um, extended areas. And that would also demand a change in the facade. So there was an exoskin of this green coming and the inside floor plate, which was having the glass facade, could be maneuvered and changed. With such kind of a facade systems, both the glass and nature can coexist and give birth to a much more sensitive and sensible living. It will not only enhance our performance because we'll be living in a biophilic environment, engaging with butterflies and floras and fauna and colors and birds all around you would be tapping into fresh oxygen. You will get fresh, fresh oxygen to live together, be with it. It will also have a very great improvement into human DNA. In Calcutta, we are suffering from a lot of lung diseases, asthmas, absentism is one of the very common things in offices. And to get beyond it, we need to make our office environment much more sensitive and ecologically integrated, even if it is vertical. Small plantation here and there would not do. We need to actively include vertical forests and engage people, admiring and respecting nature. We are the curators of our own world. And we have to respect 
our building envelope in its symphony and harmony.